Hi, Gail Newman here again. We're going to take the piece of cane that we took the bark off of, and we're now going to do the profiling, which helps us to then bend the cane in half and uh, start making the reed. So we've only taken the outer amount of cane off. We're also going to want to sand the inside of it. This is some 400 grit sandpaper. You can also use 200 grit sandpaper. What we want to do is just make it a little smoother on the inside. Get some of the bumps off. And you can just feel it with your fingers, see if it, if you've gotten the ridges off. It needs a little bit more. It goes a little faster with 200 grit, 220. It's better. Now I've been soaking this again for a couple hours and we want it to be nice and soft, easier to cut. Put it back on the easel. And take off where we left off before. So the whole point of this is that the middle part is where we're going to bend it over and it's really still pretty stiff. We're going to take the remainder bits of high points off. This is the part that's kind of hard to describe. I usually thin it out to a very even dimension and it's usually about half a millimeter is what I'm taking off of the whole piece and especially just evening it out and if you can see, follow the grain of the cane. Just take the high parts off. So when you think you've gone about a half millimeter down and you can see here's a place where it's a little bit darker yellow that needs to come down. You can kind of go by visual color. So it's getting a little more even. And again, I'm using my thumb to guide, the thumb of my left hand to guide the knife. And I'm pushing on it and I'm also pulling back a little bit. So I have really good control of each pass. Get it wet again. The process of profiling is probably one of the most important pieces of the puzzle. I don't know if you can see it, but what we're going to try to do is to make this area right in the tip thinner so you can see it's, it'll slant down like this at this angle. When I finally get it profiled, you'll be able to see that angle. Now I'm going to start to take a little more dig in a little bit more right into the tip area. If we can see it yet, a little bit of a dipping in there.
being careful at this part of the making is important because it's easier to work on the easel than when you have bent the blades over and then having to work on each side. This you can see both sides at the same time really and you can also take it off and look at it which is an advantage. You can see through it a little bit where the darker and lighter places are. Whereas when you have it bent over you can't really do that. If we can see, is that coming through the little dips right here? see how it feels. You can kind of hold it between your fingers, putting your support of your fingers in the middle of it. I can't really bend it yet, so we have quite a ways to go. You can kind of feel how it might swivel back and forth and almost want to, oh, there it went. There's a little bit of a bend. You don't really want to bend it before you ha are ready for it with your knife, but let's put it back on and take some more of that middle off. So at this point, I'm also trying to get an even line from here to the middle. There's kind of an imaginary, imaginary line right here in the middle of the cane. You can draw that in, but it would be pointless because you keep scraping it off. So just kind of imagine this middle line and an even scrape from here to the middle on both sides, kind of in mirror image of each other. So I'm coming back a little ways and then as I get to the middle I'm bearing down a little more so I take a little more cane off in the middle. Starting back. It's also important to remember not to work in one area for a long period of time because you can make yourself a little too much depth. You want to kind of move around, take a little bit off of one part and move over and just keep moving. Let's see if it's getting any thinner. Maybe you can see the, that's a little more even. You can kind of see slightly darker, 
places when I shine the light through, there's a place right there I could get. A little better. Yeah, now it's wanting to bend just a little bit more. I think I'm gonna do a little more to it. You don't really need the rubber bands at this point when it starts to get toward the end. You can really hold it down pretty easily with your fingers down here. If you can follow one grain all the way through from one side to the other, you can kind of see what needs to be taken down. And really, you'll get the idea of it by doing it. You can see that profile. I think it's more clear now. It kind of dips right here in the middle. It's feeling better. Now you can resort to sandpaper at this point. But you always get more off and you have a lot of control with the knife. So you can keep using the knife. But if you find that you have a bunch of gouges in your cane, like big divots and things, sometimes sanding against the grain like this can give you a little bit of, what this does, besides evening it up a little bit, is it puts lines in the cane in this direction so that when you shave, you're only shaving a little bit at a time between the grain marks. And so you can, if you're having trouble with controlling the knife, you can do that from time to time, do a little on each side and then go back to the sandpaper. Don't just rely on sandpaper, but it <clears throat> can give you some can give you a little bit of help. Getting a little thinner. I'm going to try bending it over now. You can either soak it for a couple of minutes, or you can just get it wet with your fingers. Um, so, a real critical. I need a pencil. Thank you. 
<laughs> okay. Um, marking this middle line, now is the time to mark the middle line. And mark it there and then turn it over and mark the middle again because inevitably when we mark these wire lines, they're not exactly perfect. There's nothing about this process that's exactly perfect. It's without machines. You have to do it by hand. So I kind of size it up, get it completely straight this way. If it's too, I have kind of long fingers, and if you're holding a contrabassoon piece of cane, you might not be able to grab it from both ends, but I need to grab it with both ends with my fingers. You're holding it steady. And then you put a little bit of pressure with this index finger and you just have to trust that it's going to bend over uh, straight. Keep it really, really perpendicular to the blade. And then you just pull down And that's the sound you want to hear. All of these little fibers at the tip of the cane breaking apart. Good. Now I usually take a little pair of scissors and just snip off the little teeny fibers that are sticking up just so We'll be opening and closing this maybe three or four times. So it's good to cut those off because sometimes when you unfold it, they don't want to, the fibers don't want to go and match right back up again. This way you cut that off and it's just perfect. So next time we'll take off from this point. <laughs>